programme takes us to Longwell Green, a quiet suburb of Bristol and the home of the Paramedic Private Ambulance Service, owned and run by Mr Keith Pillinger. Viewers will be aware that at the moment the country is experiencing one of the worst droughts in living memory and it is alleged that today Mr Pillinger intends to tap into the public water supply to supply water to his own stream running through his garden simply for cosmetic purposes. Earlier today we recorded what was Mr Pillinger's stream confirming that it has in fact run dry. We're going to knock Mr Pillinger's door to see if we can get him on camera and give us an interview. Mr. Pillinger seems reluctant to answer his door. What do you want? Ah, Mr. Pillinger, I'm from FTV. We'd like to speak to you, sir, about your illegal usage of water to feed your stream. Have you any comment on this? No, I've got nothing to say. Nothing at all to say. No, we, well, is it true that you intend to use public water to flood your stream in your no, garden? No, Alice, I've already told you. I've got nothing to say. Yes, now. but we're told that you intend to no, tap no, no, into no, the no, water no, supply, I'm sir. I'm telling you, go. I don't no, no, no there's no reason for this, sir. I'm not telling you anymore. Well, we can only assume that this is true. Earlier on today when you rang up, I'm not having no comment. Now, piss off. You don't intend to tap into the water then, sir? Well, as you can see, Mr. Pillinger is not terribly cooperative. I thought I told you not to piss off before somebody gets hurt. Right, now, go, go, go! I don't want to stay. Go. The incident you've just witnessed took place about three hours ago and the paramedic ambulance station is now under police siege. When Mr Pillinger fired, he injured one of our camera crews who was rushed to hospital but we believe his injuries aren't serious. Chief Inspector Elver Fishlock has been on the telephone to Mr Pillinger in the attempt to talk him into giving himself up without any further bloodshed. There's just been two shots, and I, three shots now, and I believe that the police have brought this matter to a swift conclusion. Let's find out. Well, the police have now allowed us back on the ambulance station. It would appear that the shots we heard were exchanges between Mr Pillinger and the police. Mr Pillinger, we're told, has been fatally wounded. There are no police injuries at this time. It appears Mr Pillinger was trying to make his escape through the back door and over his swimming pool when police marksmen gunned him down. Lewis with us, who is Mr Pillinger's neighbour. Tell me, Mrs Lewis, how long have you lived next door to Mr Pillinger? 25 years. And what sort of man have you found him to be? Very quiet. Very quiet, a quiet sort of man. You, you wouldn't have expected anything of this nature oh, to have no, occurred. Like this, no. So when the police arrived today, it was a shock to you? Great shock, yes. How about his ambulance uh, service? Have you found him to be coming and going at all hours of the day or, or not very busy? What kind of things have happened well, very here? very busy, but he's certainly not noisy or anything. He's not? No, he's, not he's, so in fact, he's been a good, quiet neighbour. Yeah, very quiet. OK, Mr. Lewis. Thank you. Mr. Pillinger's body has not been moved since his confrontation with police marksmen and we're now awaiting the arrival of a city ambulance to take him to the mortuary. Police did want to use one of Mr Pillinger's paramedic vehicles, but Mrs Pillinger refused. For years now, friends and relatives have wondered how a humble ambulance man like Mr Pillinger has been able to afford and maintain the luxury lifestyle. Detached house, swimming pool, beautiful gardens, all the trappings of the rich and famous. He even owned his own Rolls Royce. After the shooting incident, police searched a paramedic ambulance station and a massive supply of drugs were found. It appears that the paramedic ambulance service was simply a front for a huge drug operation. Police have succeeded in smashing one of the largest drug rings in Britain. The swimming pool was filled with preserving fluid which in itself contained numerous body organs, some of which were too gruesome to show on film, all of which were on sale to the highest bidder. Ironically, the stream which started off the investigation is now in full flood with water from the main. 
This is Steve Ford for News at 10 at Onwell Bridge. Thank you. 